Um, good, like decent. I didn't actually end up taking that contract. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. Um, it was very tempting, and I think at, at least it opened up like the possibility of like in the future, like outsourcing and stuff like that, and like delegating, figuring out what parts I like to do. So that it helped in that way, like your conversation. It helped me realize, okay, I I really like the the conducting the actual research part. I don't. Yeah. Um, I am very bad at synthesis and like reports and like stakeholders, less so stakeholder stuff. Um, and yeah, so I have someone like, uh, like a research colleague that like that is good at the things that I'm bad at. So I could work with her on things and, but yeah, yeah, I, I didn't end up taking the contract because I'm like, okay, this is just gonna, it's just too much for me, you know? I it like, might have been too early for you to even like realize a lot of stuff. So maybe like end of summer that you have all your shit figured out. Yeah. You could pursue it then, but no, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. So just because I didn't want to lose the, the first contract I had, right? Like, um, like it might stress me out and I might not position myself to bring that on to full time, even though, you know, like it's likely to bring to full time permanent, yeah. but just in case, you know, um, well, full time permanent would be the ideal scenario. Yeah, exactly. Full time permanent. And then as if anything, um, are you doing any check-ins to like understand what, so like, obviously when you set up the contract, there's a user experience output like from your side but in the intermediary like do you understand what they're looking for in like in a person to work with um i think my intuition tells me that i'm i got that part um fairly covered because i do spend a lot of time like kind of being good to work around type of thing i do like like maybe even like 30%, 40% of my effort is just like being cool and being likable to everyone. So I, I think like that, like intuitively, I think I got the EQ part um, down. So it should be okay. Should be okay. But I, yeah. I, I would explicitly ask what you could be doing better. Okay. So like, I, I like, um, especially if you're confident in knowing you're doing a good job, for the core aspects of it, I always like even my boss. The last two weeks, I asked like, obviously, like the team love like same thing as you. Team loves me. Leadership's bought into my vision, etc. What could I be doing better? And what she said wasn't anything drastic. It's like, oh, I wish you let me know, update me more on these specific things. And then um, now I started doing it. She like per like purposely put a thing on the one on one this week. It's like. I love how you like purposely took the feedback and like implemented it so quickly. And it's not like I'm doing a bad job. It's just like, what can I do to be even better? Mm. And it shows that you're willing to do that. So mm -hmm. it takes the like, oh, I think I'm doing well and putting it in their court of like realizing you're doing well. Cause it took her a while to be like, oh, I think you're doing great, but like, oh, this might be better. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna write this down. Seems like a, it makes sense. I guess no, I just never got to like doing something like this actively. Yep. Okay, written down. Um, so the the big thing that wanted wanted to get your your thoughts on, um, was like, how can I, like, set myself up to sustainably and long term like, read more. And like read in the sense like not not like sometimes when I read and I block time out I'm like just like okay read like and then I just it's just it feels the more of the work and energy goes into like like planning for it and then like trying to get into it and being hard on myself to start reading for like fucking fifteen minutes and then finishing and not picking up anything you know so this is like super shallow reading I have um, the easiest thing ever and it's probably the best thing for you in the long run. Um, Add it to right before you sleep. Interesting. Because one, it's something that um, it actually brings you down 
and like sets you up for better sleep. Obviously, me researching all this, it's, it's uh -huh. a proven fact. Two, it like you have your book there, and and here's what you do: you aim for like, and this is based on your reading speed and like how like aim for two chapters. You will always read more. Be like, I'm gonna read two chapters before bed every day, or I'm gonna read 20 pages before bed every day. Every single time you go read more. Huh. Um, and then keep a notebook beside your bed, like with the book. And you just jot your notes down there. Take away all the digital aspect of it. Hmm. Huh. Okay. That makes sense. Let me try that. I will. And and here's where I would, if you want to do it more during the day, I, I'm always reading two books. I'm reading one nonfiction and one fiction. Mm -hmm. The fiction one that like really like takes you in and like it's a story. I keep that around my desk for like, if I have downtime, I might open it. I might not, but I'm not pressured to read it. The nonfiction is what I do before bed usually. And it's like, that's where it's like, it's not just about the fun and the story. It's about like learning something and hmm. you actually process it better as you sleep. Hmm. Yeah. I, th I think like to begin, like even just the different categories this would be new for me. I don't even read any fiction these days and I need to read more fiction because it's like a, uh, yeah, I feel like every page of fiction I read might bring more to my life than like five pages of nonfiction, to be honest, these days. And here's one of the cool thing about fiction that I learned about lately is that reading fiction drastically um, ups your empathy because hmm. you, be, you become ingrained in the characters and like because it does so much more than like a TV show, like you read so much more into the character, you understand people better. Right. Okay, that makes sense. And, and, and if you feel like, try it back and forth. If fiction before bed actually is better for you, do that too. Right. Give yourself a buffer. Because like if, you like, if you're on a, a stricter sleep schedule, like you want to sleep at 11, um, try to go to bed a little bit earlier, earlier especially if it's fiction, because you will want to read more. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, and it helps with the sleeping earlier too. Like the yeah, getting to and bed. it takes away the blue light. Mm -hmm. Right. True. There's like added benefit to it. Right. Yeah. Got to do that. Got to do that. Got to find myself a nice fiction. Nice fiction. Thinking about like rereading like the um, Narnia. I grew up reading Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, so I, have, gonna... I have the set here if you want it. Yeah, I'd be down. Yeah, if you have it and you're not you're not using it right now, it would be yeah. it would be good. No, I, I pretty much like I this, I read on the Kindle a lot now. Mm, mm. Um. Or, nice. um, or my, like, if it's during the day, I'll read on my iPad because the blue light. But I want to get uh, Kobo because you can download directly from the library onto the Kobo, which is sick. The library? Like the, the Toronto Public Library? Yeah. Oh, wow. It has an app that you download, like, the ebook right onto your thing. So sick. Wow. So you yeah. have, like, access to all of that, and it's all free, too. And, like, perfect because it's so mobile. Like, Right, like sometimes, especially on vacation, you go and you bring like two books that are like chunky and like mm -hmm. you knock through two in the first couple of days, and then you're like, oh shit, what do I read now? Mm -hmm. Right, damn, you read that much on vacation? Jeez, I, I love it. I love it. Wow, two books. Damn, I read. I think January I read like five. Wow. So how 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 do you how like you I guess like um it's um. You, I mean, that's your thing, right? Just reading at night and then having two books, yeah. like that's you literally have 30 like that. Days. You have thirty days, and like, let's say an average books like twenty chapters, uh -huh. and you put, you say you, you probably earmark two chapters. I was probably reading like five or six. I got into it, right, right, and then then you're done a book in four days, and then you have another. Like it adds up. So so then, how much time would that be, like, ish? It depends. It depends how tired you are too, right? Like for right. me, it, I probably have an, an advantage that I don't get tired quickly. So <laughs> um, I get uh -huh. excited for reading good content and like the books I chose were good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was two fiction, like three nonfiction. Uh, but yeah, you'll see it adds up because the thing is, is that if you put it in your calendar, like you said, you're forcing yourself to read it. You're probably not reading as fast too because you're you're doing yourself a disservice by trying to like 
take it in so much. Just read. Mm -hmm. Don't even think. Just read. If you have something that's like drastically jumps out to you, write it on that pad of paper and try to synthesize it into like one or two sentences and like note the page number so you can come back to it and dive into it. But just read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before bed, 30 days, two, two to five chapters each night. You're going to pump through books. It's going to be crazy. You know, it seems seems like a bit much, but at the same time, like you recommended, like I just checked out the library and I somehow managed to do that. So I guess I'm, there's some optimism that I can kind of do that. I would aim uh, for two books a month to finish two books a month. Mm. So, uh, this is a random story. As a kid, like I, I was obsessed with reading. So I read really fast. So like they had this like, competition i think it was in grade four right where you like try to read as many books as possible and like at each threshold you would get a prize like it was like a wow piece or something uh -huh, uh -huh. and like uh it was like 1 10 20 30 40 for the school year and at the end of the year i finished 200 books mm -hmm. and the closest person was at like 34. Um, whoa like i read really fast and I just genuinely love reading. And I think it's just, it's a level up for every aspect of life. There's so much mm -hmm. you can learn, especially when you get to choose what you learn. The difference between learning from reading versus going to school is that school, everything's prescribed to you. Mm -hmm. Reading, you right. genuinely get to take in like everything you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, I think that's a big part too that I've been kind of, kind of you know, I haven't hit the mark on is like, what do I want to read? You know, what do I really want beyond like okay the task of reading and oh yeah i should do it because it's good for me type of thing like like what am i what am i actually like yeah what am i actually interested in engaged in um, these days so i think like I think getting I'm interested in like the human everything just like learning about being a human and like what levels you up what levels you down like what makes me like this that mountain is you book it's like my my partner recommend it's really good man Mm -hmm. It like understands what your roadblocks are to moving forward. Interesting. Interesting. Is, is it like um, like what is it li like like it's self help psychology? psychology. Self help psychology. And what do you like about it, like particularly, versus others, like? Um, it lays it out in a logical way, but there's just so many like. Oh damn, that makes sense. Moments. Huh. Okay. Nice. Well, and it's not, it's not it's not a huge read too, right? Like especially at the beginning of the year, I don't like to challenge myself to like big thick books. Like I like to leave those after I get some momentum and reading. Um I have a whole bunch of books I'll recommend you that I have. Like that's a good one to start because I think it's it really leans into like where you are in life right now. Mm-hmm. But there's some other ones that are like just good reading that I'll, I'll suggest later on in the year. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm the ones that you sent me though, why did you send me those books? Like, what what interested you about them? Um, to be honest, that was that was like a a random photo. Don't okay. like, definitely don't take the what the books were in because it's not really actually. I'm not that interested in that category of books. It was just like, oh yeah, I'm literally standing here. Right now, I gotta take a photo. Okay, okay. Yeah. What, what, what? So, like, jumping off, what does interest you? I think a book that would help me, like, process failure really deeply would be great. Okay. Um, Yeah. Okay. And like learn from it and then see it as a natural process and kind of heal from it too. So that would be very good. I'll have to do a double check because there was two. Oh, oh, question though. Did you read video games as a kid? Read oh, sorry. Did you, did, you, did you play video games as a kid? Yeah, I did. It depends wow. on what type. I, I, I was like a MMO RPG. Played like yeah, yeah. RuneScape and like, you know, like Skyrim, that type of stuff. Mostly Love RuneScape. Skyrim. I yeah. Hours into Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Nice was... Guild Republic. That was such a good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like those those types of games. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Primarily, and then like you know, like 
typical counter strike and all of the shooters like the mass shooters and stuff like that not mass shooters i should say that but like yeah big shooter games Hard person shooters like counter strike halo yeah exactly oh, like, halo yeah, yeah, the same shit uh-huh there's an interesting book and i don't know if it applies i don't think it applies to you because you're really hard on yourself with failure right i don't know or do I you not Huh? There's two aspects. Do you, do you just blow by it, like failure? I, not. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm, I mean, I'm still having a hard time processing, like, like failing in ecom. Like, as it's been two years now, but I'm still having a hard time doing that. So, um, and I've literally done like um, therapy and like all of that, and still not, still not completely f- done. So I think like. Books would be another way to. So then that that's not a good book. That that book is the opposite of people why they like blow by like the video game generation why they just like bulldoze past failure because when you die in those games or fail you just start over. <laughs> Continue <laughs> five four three two like. Uh-huh. It was a really interesting psychology book um, on gaming. It just it that's one of the chapters of like how that generation sees failure. Interesting. Um, Interesting. But, the games on that you note, that. like maybe gaming could be like it's not technically a book, but it could it could help like build that sensation in a way. Maybe like just finding a good game that I no, not right now. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, read first. Uh huh. I feel uh, like you're gonna you're gonna jump in so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean probably. But, I mean, but it's, I, I guess in a way it's like good for my healing, right? It's like it's then is it is it okay? I'll read first. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Here's what I do. I would jump into gaming in like fall. Like I feel like summer's a the time to like go out, like enjoy yeah. the weather. Right yeah. now, the next two months or so is just building good habits and like getting in a routine. Like those two things are probably the most important. Like leverage summer to do the social stuff that you want to, and like you've identified that that's number one. Then like when the weather gets shitty, put some like bring some of that social stuff online. Like so I bought a PS5 just so I can play 2K with all my friends who are dads who only play video games from like midnight to like 1 30 a.m. And it's less about the video game, it's more just talking because it's the only chance we get to talk. Mm. Hmm. So it's, it, it, I bought a seven hundred dollar machine so I can vid, like audio chat people. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So there, there's a there's a social aspect to gaming. I just don't want you to dive into that right now because you can get lost in it. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it'd have to be like particular, and I'd have to like main, have a very good relationship with it. Because I remember yeah. like during during Christmas, literally, I'd started this game called Cyberpunk, and I was like two weeks. Oh, I started it. Too. 50 hours something something wild like that like some not even not 50 hours maybe like hundreds a couple hundred hours over the course of two weeks some some crazy like that but i have to say it was like if i if i can manage it well it is a good outlet healing outlet yeah it is a good i don't want to say that either because anyone could say oh yeah this is yeah snacks and treats are good for my healing or like you know like oh this is um, i think i think your routines and your processes are more important to set up so that you don't do that for like two weeks Mm -hmm. yeah you have a you have a personality where you like really dive into the next thing that i say to you Mm -hmm. so you have to make sure you understand that first because i i'm the same way like i finished ghost of shushima in like two weeks and it's like way more than a two-week game (laughs) um what what system do you have i don't play on any consoles it's mostly like a it's like kind of like a modded up computer okay okay yeah yeah Cyberpunk was too buggy for me. That's the only reason why I stopped. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it was buggy during Christmas. They, they they made it. They they have been continually improving. So, um, yeah. it should, should be much much better now. But uh, yeah. Hmm. So I I have a question about <coughs> so yeah the reading thing I know you mentioned in the chat I would I would focus at the end of the day. Let's aim for like it's the beginning of the month. Let's aim to finish two books this month. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. That's a lot for most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And one fiction, one nonfiction. The Narnia ones, you're going to get through so fast because when you reread a book, even if it's from your childhood, you mm-hmm. go down the page a lot faster. 
mm-hmm. because you kind of know some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. So right. I'll, yeah, I'll, makes sense. We'll skip that one. I, I don't want to count Narnia yet. <laughs> Yeah, these are pretty, some pretty high standards, man, from someone who's high, literally haven't read a book in like maybe six months. End to end, I don't think I've read a book in like two years. Most, man. most people haven't read a book since they graduated university. Most people. So you're way ahead of the game. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, it's I guess it's still a really low standard, right? <laughs> but... About 15 days to do roughly like two chapters a night per book, which is you're going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Gotcha. One nonfiction, one fiction. We'll do that. And if you do more, great. If you do less, I, at least you're, you've made a process on it. Like if you've already started thinking about it, you're going to finish it. Right. Gotcha. And you've identified that it's important. And I think you know that it's important. Like. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of our generation gets trapped in like, oh, I'm going to learn through YouTube. And it is not this, your brain does not consume that information the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, So I actually wanted to bring up two things. And one of them actually is kind of addressing what we were talking about earlier. But do you have like a morning routine and a nighttime routine? These days, no. These days, I, I don't at all. It's all gone out the window. I think the only routine that I have is like I do a hit class at noon, and some some days I'll do a yoga class in the evening. Um, but no, no routine that's like self motivated. I guess um, I need to meditate more. That's been another yeah. bottleneck. Reading and meditation, both of them. Everything else is good. Sleep, nutrition, everything is good. So I would. I would focus on doing the nighttime routine, like and just actually like putting it down on paper, like what is my nighttime routine, and that includes mm-hmm. the reading, that includes mm-hmm. like whatever your sleep hygiene stuff is, mm-hmm. and like just commit to that for a couple weeks, and then see if you can start something for the morning, like getting up the same time every day, doing the same thing in order, like it sets your day up with process. If you put it on your list, I don't know if you started read Atomic Habits. Mm. It's mm-hmm. so. It, so good like it's so good okay it's a yeah. good audio book too like uh-huh. it, it i did i consumed it through audio um while i was working out but like it's just such a game changer it's it's like it's structured common sense and like you know all these things but until someone puts it in front of you with all the stats to back it up and like it's like oh why haven't i thought about this my whole life Hmm. yeah I think that's okay. a lot of what you're missing. To right. Is pro- like solid habits and solid process to follow. Right. Because like every day is new for you. It's like you don't know, should I do this or should I do that? Like start your day with intention and end your day with intention. And then you'll start to fill the middle of the day with it too. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So just write down throughout the next couple of weeks what your nighttime routine is and just mm-hmm. start committing to it. Mm-hmm. End it with reading. That's the last thing you do before you sleep. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to meditate. But I, I like to me, reading is almost meditation in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, true. It's true, um, true. And then I would start your day with it too. Even if it's there's a there's a there's a couple apps that have like a literally a two minute meditation to start your day. And like it makes it so easy. The barrier is low. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that the amount of time is, is helpful to go lower. You're right. Because I, yeah. These days, I think I get more frustration out of the trying than the actual like doing. It's like it's like the reading thing. It's like I'm oh, mm-hmm. blocking I'm blocking out time, and then it's so frustrating to start, and then I end up moving the calendar slot, and then like I'll try to do it later, and I'm like by the end of it, by the end of the week, I've moved the slot like five times. Yeah. That's why end your yeah. day, end your day with it, and yeah. just commit to two chapters a day, minimum. Mm-hmm. That, that's like if you finish two chapters, you're done. Everything else on top of that is bonus. Mm-hmm. Right. right, but I would I would write out your morning routine. I have to figure out which app has the two minute one, because I think it, it's a really good. Um, is it calm? It might be calm. Anyway, yeah. download one of those apps mm-hmm. and just do the morning meditation and find the, the the shortest one possible. The first thing you wake up and start waking up at the same time every day. Right. Yeah. 
Because you don't. Yeah, I don't. Definitely. And don't. I don't feel like you get going until like ten or eleven. Yeah, no, I get up at like ten actually, and then I don't really get going until one. Because <laughs> yeah, I that's yeah. That's yeah. yeah, yeah, especially especially for summer, you want to get more out of the day. Yeah, for so, sure. Like, it doesn't have to be drastically early. Like nine o'clock is a fine wake up time, but mm -hmm. like get going. That's true. That's true. Gotta do that. So hmm. morning, wake up at an earlier time. You set that. You can scale it back to if you want. Like start at nine forty five, and then the next week's nine thirty, and the next week. So it's not like a shock in your system. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you do when you wake up is just like. Get yourself out of bed and start that meditation somewhere else in your house. Mm -hmm. Like 10 feet from your bed is better than in your bed. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then whatever you want to do after that is up to you. You'll figure out the rest of your routine in the next couple of months. But like, I want you to have a morning routine and a night routine started and like perfected by the end of like the summer. Right. Like it's, it's like clockwork. Right. Right. Okay. So we got fiction, nonfiction. Two books, month, re, like two chapters a, a day. day. Yeah. Damn. That is not a lot. That's yeah, it, it, it's roughly it's roughly between twenty and thirty pages, and like pages are not. I mean, I don't read like a demon, man. Like what the, <clears throat> bro? That would take me like lot. two hours. I mean, not no. two hours, but it would take me like an an hour it'll and a half or something. Half, it'll take you half an hour. Interesting. It'll take you half an hour. A, a, a slow reader is two chapters is between 20, 20 to 30 minutes. It's about 10 minutes a chapter or like 10 to 15 minutes a chapter. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's, and then get the routine together before looking at any video games and then Atomic Habits. Um... You don't have to finish Atomic Habits. Tonight. I just, I'm just saying put it on your list of like next nonfiction that you start if you haven't, if you've already started one. Mm-hmm. Right. If you haven't, I, one. It's so it's I can't. I hate it because the guy thought of the easiest goddamn thing to write about. And <laughs> I'm like a bajillionaire off of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I guess like get the logic, like you said, is 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 good, right? Like it's uh, easy to read, easy to understand. Logic is clean. I think I'm trying to I need to find a way a book that's like failure oriented and like i'm gonna look deal with i'm that. gonna look at one for you next so that's next mm -hmm. finish with the finish with the habits and then i'll get you a book on failure that's like the best one to read for what you're going through mm -hmm. yeah be good that would be good Let's see yeah man i can get started in those things i don't have i don't think i have anything else to, to yeah, th those things are like. Chat about. I think those will level you up more so than anything else. Like, if you have good habits and good processes, it doesn't matter if you're a person or a company. That's gonna start everything. Mm -hmm. Like, again, read the book and it'll be like, oh damn, this makes sense. Like every successful person, outside of like wild abstract artists, have good habits. Mm -hmm. And those yeah. people are on LSD ninety percent of the day. So like, <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Cool. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take the rest of the, the time here we got and just write on like literally reflect on what we just talked about and that might be better for me, better use of our time. So I'll do that. Um no and then maybe we could chat. I I messaged your friend. Um yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. gonna set up a session. Hopefully he's is like do you know where he's based? Like he's uh, around Liberty. Or? Okay, sick, sick. Oh, it's close. Pretty it's close. like super close to you. Uh huh. Okay, very nice. He's just, he's just a good kid. Like he's just a good soul. He might be. A, yeah, by the way he's type, but by the way he speaks, I'm like, wow, this is a good person. Like, seems like a. Man, yeah. he's one of my favorite. Like, I have like I, I say I have kids everywhere. Uh huh. You meant you mentioned you mentioned. Yeah. He's one, he's of, the, one of my kids. Favorite. Wow. He's one of my favorite. Don't tell him I call him a kid, but he's <laughs> he, calls, he calls me like the his Jedi master, and he's like my Padawan, like. Uh huh. Uh huh. But um, no, like I've helped him in as much as I could throughout the years. A really, really good kid. Nice. Uh, and and he's he's nasty. Like he can really fight. Damn. He gets That's good. So, 
but that's who you want to hold your pads for you, right? Yeah. He'll talk to you. Like I've gone through a couple of workouts with him. I'm like, at the end, I was like, damn. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the feeling I'm looking for. What yeah. you literally just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. He might. He might be. This week might be tough for him because of Ramadan. But mm-hmm. let, um, I'm sure you guys will figure out a time. Right. Last question is: um, Are you a fan of like, like sleep tracking tech? Like, are you a user of that, or is it like tacky on for my you? Phone. I have one on my uh, Apple Watch. Right. Like. But, do you find that that general category of like fitness technology is like too finicky or do you enjoy it and you're like okay that's i can see the value and i can you would use this almost all of them have told me i have good sleep <laughs> <laughs> so i don't think the category is there yet oh uh, okay right right cool yeah so and have... until the category improves enough where i'm like okay you can identify that i'm not in rem um, mm-hmm. and like that i'm supposed to i'm like I'm exhausted. Why are you telling me you're, you're going to be refreshed today? Because mm-hmm. you had seven hours of great sleep, and yet, no, I have not. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting category where it goes. I just don't think it's like, it's like I do, I just finished another 24 hour sleep set test to actually track my sleep. And it's like, there were like 20 electrodes hooked up to me. If you need that right. to track it, something on my wrist, my finger, or. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be. Uh, too accurate. And what did the test show? Like, I'm, I'm curious. Like, what did I, it? I have three weeks before results. I just did it last week. Wow. And so you go to a lab and you sleep there, type of thing, or how does it work? And then I work the whole day of like, so I, I, there's like the overnight one's a traditional test. I've done that like seven times already. Really? Then, wow. Yeah. And then the the one I do now because of like my issue is that they track you overnight and then they track you throughout the day, like trying as much as possible to go through a normal work day to see how your brain response to sleep wow how, how much does one of those cost like three to... it's cover throw hit what yeah what yeah no way <laughs> how do you know about all these suck free resources that's what the what the heck i mean the library makes sense but it didn't really make sense until like you said yeah do it but this is covered through ohip what the heck sleep is a health issue it's the biggest health issue so you just go to the clinic and then with your health card and no no you have to set up an appointment you got to talk to the doctor for it's, it's ah okay okay it's a process but it's free uh, okay cool 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 I'll send I'll send you one of the doctors downtown that I went to nice yeah cool totally they were okay free. like it's up at it's up at a uh, college in Sedona cool uh, or did they close down da da da. I'll find it. I'll send it to you. And just message them and be like, like, look, I haven't been sleeping good. Can I get some sort of test or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know how they, they do it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Gotcha. We'll do that. Well. All right, dude. Well, you. hopefully you get something scheduled with Zaya and we'll check in. But yeah, yeah, I want you to, like, if you can start reading and get these habits understood, everything's going to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. We'll keep you updated on, you know, like how it changes and improves. But uh, knowing our track record so far, it should should definitely improve. So I'm gonna fight you if not. So <laughs> please. Or I'll get Zion too. I won't even fight you. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Have cool, a good man. weekend. Have a good weekend. Later. Cheers. Peace.